Talented and passionate artists don't really understand that they are, by default, their very own music publisher. You all don't understand that you're not just an artist, but you're also a business. Now, this comes with some misinformation out here on the internet because a lot of you all don't understand it simply because of the lack of information about publishing and everybody telling you just to go directly to song trust. And I've been preaching this on my channel for a while. Now, understanding the dynamics of music publishing can allow you to miss out on, on some key royalties that you actually need to fund your business and to line your pockets. But at the same time, some feel they may never own their work and that's not the case. However, every artist deserves to fully benefit from their art so I'm going to show you how with music publishing coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. Though today's video is pretty much a bit of review for most of my followers. If you are new, this is the reason why I'm making this video. And it is the fall. We have to talk about publishing so that when we release our stuff in the spring, and that's what we're gearing up for, uh, we will be ready to receive all the cash that we need. So you got to understand some key steps and key things about being your very own music publisher, which you are. So let's hop in. So the first thing we got to understand about music publishing is that it represents the musical works copyright, right? In a vast ocean of the music industry, understanding the significance of music publishing is paramount at its core. And music publishing deals with the ownership of the song. This encompasses the lyrics you pin down and the melodies you craft. And when you control this, you ensure two critical things, the proper credit for your work and rightful compensation for its use. In essence, though, owning your musical copyright is not just about business. It's an affirmation of your artistic authenticity and originality. That was a nice touch right there. OK, so everything boils down to this right here, the lyrics and the melody. And once you understand that, then you can understand everything else as I boil down how we're going to get the money from this music publishing right here, right? Now, you are, by default, your very own music publisher. You are the default music publisher. Before venturing into the glitz and glam of big publishing deals, recognize your inherent power. I need you to do this, okay? Because this is very important. This is how a lot of artists get scammed. By default, when you create, you have the rights to your masterpiece. This initial control is not just about authority. It's about empowerment. It's the foundational belief that every artist, irrespective of their reach or fame, should have the first say in the fate of their creations. And this is true. If you don't understand this, then we it, it's like moving forward becomes difficult because you don't realize the power that you have when it comes to actually getting the money and doing what you please with your own creation. You may be creating them, but you won't really fully understand how to really promote and exploit these things once we get into it check it out now a pro is not a publishing company because once you once you get to the point of being empowered about your music you always say hey man i got my publishing in place i got my bmi i'm good no you're not check it out the world of music rights can be confusing but distinctions are vital a pro or performance rights organization has a very distinct role it does it tracks and ensures you get paid for performances of your song. However, it doesn't lay claim to any rights. Therefore, it cannot be a publishing company. OK, this clarity, understanding that PROs aren't publishers is liberating because now if I tell you this, then you're going to say, well, 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 who's the music publisher? I thought that was the publishing company. No, because then we have to go back to number two. You are your default music publisher. Now, let me finish. Just as every role in music production is distinct and essential, so is its function in the artist's journey. So BMI and ASCAP, CSAC, GMR, wherever you are, Jazz Rack, PRS, doesn't make a difference, Amcos, whatever. Okay, Sam Rowe, doesn't make a difference. These people just collect performing rights for the publisher, which is you, which is the company. Check out number four three main publishing royalties because there are going to be three main ones your music travels it plays on radio streams online and resonates in movies and for every avenue it takes there's a royalty associated with it now these are the mechanical synchronization and public performance royalties it's not just about multiple income streams it's about understanding and ensuring that every penny you deserve finds its way to you your art has value which translates to various forms of compensation so if we take a look at these three right here, mechanical, synchronization, and public performance, most of this stuff will come from a few organizations that I'm going to talk about in the next slide. The synchronization royalty is, an, is comprised of three royalties, 
one, an upfront fee, two, a performance royalty that will end up down here, and then three, sometimes it's called a videogram royalty, but you can pretty much chalk it up as a mechanical royalty when it comes to reproduction of the actual uh, song in, let's say, you make it to Blu-ray, you make it to that point. But all of it will be comprised in one contract with one you know, payment outright. But those three royalties are built in. Now the performance royalties, rather, will come to your BMI and ASCAP account when this stuff lands on TV, or if it's strictly from TV, it will be performing on TV. It's a performance coming through the TV speakers. Therefore, it's performed for the audience. And all that is comprised in the synchronization royalty. So really, even though I said there's three, there's technically only two, mechanical and public performance royalties. And everything in between just trickles down between that. So let's get to the nitty gritty here. Five, you don't need a music publisher to collect for you. And I've been saying this on this channel, you know, if you've been following me for a minute. One of the myths in this industry is the indispensability of the middleman. You as an artist can chart your own course, you know this. With determination and the proper knowledge, you can independently collect the royalties your work earns. This is true. This isn't just about monetary gains. It's about breaking free from dependencies on people like Song Trust. Oh, I can't go get my own publishing. I need a CD Baby Pro. I need, you know what I'm saying, all these other people to go get my money for me. That's not the truth. True independence in artistry transcends the stage. It really does. It extends into the business and the transactions of the business. As long as we understand that, hang tight because we got one more to go. As long as we understand this now, let's go back through it again. Number one, music publishing represents the musical works copyright. Number two, you are your default music publisher. Number three, a PRO is not a publishing company. Number four, there are three main publishing royalties. And number five, you don't need a music publisher to collect for you. You are the publisher. But check this out. Number six, the US companies that help you collect without a middleman. And these are all of them right here. Of course, I'm missing CSAC, but most people can't get into CSAC unless they have some money rolling. ASCAP, BMI, HFA, the MLC, and Music Reports. You notice that sound exchange is not here because that is not music publishing money. That's strictly on the master side. The music industry is vast, but not all of it is a labyrinth. There are allies like BMI and ASCAP, the MLC, Music Reports, and the Harry Fox Agency designed to help you manage and collect your royalties. And these aren't just companies. They're bridges to your independence. Okay. By partnering with them, you can ensure that while you maximize your reach, you still remain firmly in control. All right. So this is really the only middleman that you want to deal with. Here's a bonus. They're going to take a cut. They're going to take a cut. The MLC is a pass through entity. They don't take one. And Music Reports is a pass through ent entity. They don't take a cut. HFA takes a cut. 11.5% at HFA. BMI is somewhere between, a, well, they're going for profit now because they're up for sale, but somewhere around 11 to 13%. And same with ASCAP, 11 to 13% of the money skims off the top. And then you get passed on the rest of the royalties. The, these are the only middlemen you need to deal with, period. Don't put anybody else in your mix, right? Now, isn't it too complicated to manage all of this on my own? I, I know this is what you're saying. It's natural to feel overwhelmed, especially when faced with the intricacies of the music business. However, like all things, it becomes more manageable with knowledge and practice. Plus, remember, you're not truly alone in this. There are resources and platforms like the 60 Day Record Label designed to guide and support independent artists, especially on this journey right here to getting your money direct like Frank Lucas and American Gangster. You understand what I'm saying? So, wouldn't a major publisher have more reach and resources than I do? A major publisher does have a vast network, but it comes at a cost, often a significant slice of your royalties and sometimes even creative control. So by handling your publishing or working with more of the four main US companies I mentioned, you retain more of your earnings and artistic freedom. So you might say, well, hey, if I partner with a bigger publisher, they may actually work my records. That's not the truth. See, the main exploitation of a publisher is to A, get as many versions of the song done as possible, and B, get as many syncs as possible from the record. That's it, and then to collect all the money properly. But they're gonna use the same organizations unless they're like, you know, Sony, Warner, you know what I mean, Universal. They're gonna use the same exact organizations. If you got a major indie publisher or you got a major independent publisher, they're using the same organizations, y'all. That's why I gave them to you, so that you don't have to deal with these people. Because all they're gonna do, if they're not already working or have favor to work certain records, then they're not gonna work your records. They're just gonna sit there and collect your money. And I'm telling you this because 
I am a publisher. I know what I know what it is. It's a lot of work to exploit a record. So enough of the soapbox. Now, what if I make a mistake in managing my own publishing rights? Mistakes are part of any learning curve. It's essential to stay informed, double check contracts and your song registrations before signing or submitting and perhaps even consult with industry professionals or legal counsel when uncertain like me. Over time, as you familiarize yourself with the process, the likelihood of errors will diminish. You can always book a call with me because, you know, if you got questions, I got answers. In order to make all of this work flawlessly, let's go back. These companies have a specific order in which they must be unlocked like keys to the door. There is a certain way that you have to enter each door. Many of you all already have these two accounts and some of you all already have these. But in order to not let your publishing get lost in the sauce, because you got different accounts here and here and here, maybe some have this, we have to put them all together in a chain linked correctly and properly so that none of our money gets lost. So here's what you can do. Your music is more than just melodies and lyrics. It's a legacy. By understanding the core principles of music publishing, you're not only ensuring your financial future, but also solidifying your autonomy as an artist. Begin your journey of knowledge today and remember, you have the rights, the power and the tools at your fingertips. Dive deeper into my resources below this video to uncover every detail of music publishing and ensure your art gets the compensation, recognition and reward it deserves. Here's how we're going to do it. With the 60 day record label course, I built it. It's now called the 60 day record label pro course. All right. But it's a framework to establish a record label and your publishing company in a perfect 60 day sequence, starting with the LLC to the bank account to international and domestic publishing collection without the middleman taking 15% to the contract templates seated within the course. So you understand the game and you don't get taken advantage of. I did all of this because I knew that if you were starting, you were going to need a foundation to build upon without the foundation, marketing promotion and all this stuff doesn't make any sense because the dirt that's underneath your feet will crumble. You can see all the stuff that's covered inside. Click the link below to find out more information and to get started today. But let's develop your strategy because I know you got questions before you start. Just book a call with me on musicmoneymakeover.com. And if this is your first time watching the channel, please take advantage of the free stuff below. However, by getting this right, you're going to be able to make choices benefiting your art and finances, retain your inherent music publishing rights, fully tap into all publishing income avenues and use platforms like ASCAP, the MLC without losing control, understand the difference between PR roles and publishers and navigate the music industry confidently and assertively. But if you keep getting it wrong, you say, yeah, I don't need it. I've been doing it right. I know what I'm doing. Well, that's going to lead to lost revenue, missing out on potential income from royalties, lost control, prematurely signing away valuable assets, confusion, stumbling into unfavorable deals due to misunderstandings. I don't want that to happen, but this happens for many people who say, I got my distro kid or my tune core. I got my BMI. I'm good. And then they just ride off into the sunset. And what they don't understand is once they start their promotion and marketing campaigns and the money starts rolling on the music, it's like, dang, I could have got more checks if I would have just followed everything in the video. But because I said I knew what I was doing, then I'm going to lose out on money and I'm going to have to pivot later in my journey because I need to find sources of making more money. I'm not just starting you here at these accounts because I'm going to set you up for success later to pull and advance yourself from different things. OK. So this is where I want you to be right over here. So now that you understand where these key accounts are and how the money will flow from them, now you understand that yes, you truly are a business and you can build the empire that you've always dreamed of for yourself. And really, quite frankly, you don't really have a choice considering that now, even though we've been in a wild, wild west, it really is the wild, wild west of this music apocalypse that's going on right now. So music money makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com, download the free stuff below, hop into the 60 day record label course to boost that publishing income, book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com, and I'll see you next time. Peace.